Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is a beautiful exponential question we have here. And it says 2 to the power of m plus 4 to the power of m is equal to 8 to the power of m. And now it is requiring us to look for m. So let's try the given value. This is 2 to the power of m plus 4 to the power of m equal to 8 to the power of m. Now, ask yourself, what is the lowest value among 2, 4, and 8? 2 is the lowest value, right? Very good. Then, can we express 4 in terms of 2? Since we have 2 as the lowest value, can we express 4 in terms of 2? Yes, because I can raise 2 to a power of 2 to give me 4. Can I also express 8 in terms of 2? Of course. Because I can raise 2 to power 3 to give me 8. So that means 4 and 8 can be expressed in terms of this lowest value. So let's do that. So this is 2 to power m plus. Now let's express this in terms of 2. So write 2. What power can I raise 2 to give me 4? 2. Because 2 to power 2 gives me 4. Now let's raise it to power m. So raise to power m equal to. Now let's do the same thing here. 2 to power what will give me 8? You agree with me that when I raise 2 to power 3, I will get 8, right? Now let's raise that to the power of m. Now there is something we need to do. So let's write 2 to power m here first. Plus, according to indices, this power of 2 and this power of m can switch positions. Because I want this to look just like this one. So let's switch their positions. So this becomes 2 to the power of m to the power of 2. Now notice that 2 and m has switched their positions here. Equal to, let's do the same thing here. That means I'm going to be writing 2 to power m now raised to power 3. You see that? Now watch that everything is the same. I have 2 to power m here, I have 2 to power m here, and I also have 2 to power m here. I can easily say that let 2 to the power of m be equal to p. So that means that wherever I see 2 to the power of m, I'll be writing p. So let's do that here. So this is 2 to the power m. I'm going to be writing p there. p plus, this is p. 2 to power m, so I'll write p, and it is raised to power 2. So let's raise that to power 2. Equal to, this is 2 to power m, that means I'm going to be writing p, and I'll raise it to the power of 3. Now, since this one is the highest power, I'm going to be moving these other ones to the right. So that means I'll be writing this one first. So p to power 3. So I'll move this p to power 2 because it is the second highest power. So we have to move this p to power 2 to this side. When it moves, it is going to be negative because it is quite positive here. So let's move it. It becomes negative, which is minus p to power 2. And when p crosses, it becomes minus p. Now everything now equates to 0 since we don't have anything here anymore. Now notice that p is common. So since p is common, we have to factorize p out. So let's do that. So when I factorize p out, what will be left here? I'll be having p squared minus, what will be left here? p minus, what will be left here? 1 equal to 0. Now notice that we have an expression here multiplying this expression in a bracket equal to zero. As long as what we have here is equated to zero, I can split them by saying P is equal to zero or what I have in the bracket, which is, let me not write bracket anymore, which is P to power two minus P minus one is equal to zero. Now let's solve this one. This one here. 
Remember that we said 2 to the power of m is equal to p. That means where I have p, I can easily write 2 to the power of m. So now let's equate this to 0. There is no number I can raise to a power to give me 0. So what do I do? I have to take the natural log of both sides. So that means I'll take the natural log of 2 to the power m. I will also take the natural log of 0. Now, it is possible that this m can go back, can go to the back of the natural log so that I have m natural log 2, or you can call it ln, equal to ln 0. So in order to make m subject, which is the value we're looking for, we're going to be dividing both sides by ln 2. So I have ln 0 divided by ln 2. Now, normally, ln 0 is equal to negative infinity. And when negative infinity divides ln 2, you're still going to get negative infinity. That means m is equal to negative infinity from this expression. Now, let's focus our attention on this other one. From this other one, we ask ourselves, can we factorize? The answer is no. We cannot factorize. So because we cannot factorize, we're going to be using uh, the general formula of quadratic. So let's use that general formula, which is uh, P, because we are looking for P. P is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. Now our A is 1. Let's, let us see that A is 1. Our B is negative 1. And our C is also negative 1. So let's put that here. So this becomes P equal to negative B. Negative B. So B is negative 1. So let's put a negative here in a bracket plus or minus the square root of b squared. b is negative 1, so let's put that there. Negative 1 squared minus 4ac. So 4 times a, a is 1, so let's put a 1 there. Then c, c is negative 1. Good, that is it. Now divide by 2a. a is what? 1, as you see here. Now, watch what will happen. Watch what will happen. So, P now will become minus times minus gives you plus, right? So, this one becomes positive. 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 1 square gives you 1. Then, I have minus 4 times 1 times minus 1. That will give you plus 4. Now, divide by 2 times 1 gives you what? 2. Very simple. Very simple expression we have there. So now let's continue. So I have P to be equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4 gives what? 5. Now divide by 2. So now what we have here is 1 plus or minus to square root of 5 divided by 2. That means we can separate this expression here. That means we can write P to be equal to 1 plus the square root of 5. That means I took this sign first, divide by 2, or P is equal to, now let's take this other sign, 1 minus the square root of 5, divide by 2. So this one you see here carrying a positive sign is a golden ratio. And that is what we're going to use to solve. Remember that we said P is equal to 2 to power M, right? We said P equal to 2 to power M. That means, whenever we see P, we're going to be putting 2 to the power of M. So let's do that here. So this is P. We're going to be putting 2 to the power of M. Equal to, now I have 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Now let me pretend as if I want to make this one a base 2, just as this one is 2. Let me see if I can get something from there. So 2. Now, is there any value that I can raise 2 to a power to give me this expression? Can I raise 2 to any power to give me this expression? No. 
that is not possible. Because that is not possible, that means we're going to be taking the log of both sides. You can decide to take natural log, you can decide to take log. It doesn't mean which one you take. You are still correct. Now let's go, let's take the log of both sides. Or let's just take the natural log of both sides. So we have a natural log of 2 to the power m equal to the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Now, just as we did before, this m or this power can go behind the natural log. So let's write that. m natural log of 2. You see that this power has gone behind the natural log? Yes. Equal to. Now, ln of 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Now, in order, let's make this a subject. That means our m will be equal to ln 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, which we have here, divide by what? ln 2. So, some people will decide to stop here, but you can still go further. Because this expression at the top is dividing this expression at the bottom, we can separate them. So this can be written as m equal to ln, what we have at the top, which is 1 plus the square root of 5, minus, because it is division, that is why you are seeing minus here, ln 2, which is the denominator. So I have been able to separate the numerator from the denominator by expressing it this way. And putting minus there. So divide by ln 2. So this is the famous answer we are looking for. So we saw that m is equal to negative infinity from what we have before and m is equal to this expression we have here which is ln into 1 plus square root of 5 minus ln 2 divided by ln 2. But since m is a natural number, we're not going to pick this. We're just going to pick this expression as the final result. If you know you have learned something from this video and you really enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. Some of you are hesitant to subscribe. Please don't. It doesn't cost you anything. Subscription is free. Just press the subscription button and there you don't miss any of my video. And until next time, take care.